Hey everybody, this is Joe. Thank you for watching my Giga Texas construction update video. Well, it's Monday, the 23rd of January, 2023, out here at Giga Texas. And you can see today I'm across the highway again over on the west side where there's some new changes that are going on that we'll talk about. First thing I want to just remind everybody is this coming Wednesday, the 25th, at 4.30 Central Time, 5.30 p.m. Eastern Time, 2.30 p.m. on the Pacific Time, and 22.30 GMT is going to be the fourth quarter financial results meeting, and there'll be a lot of really great information. I know a lot of people are waiting to find out what they're going to hear from what happened at the end of last year, so make sure you take a look at that and check out the T Tesla Investor Relations website. Now for today, a couple of things I'm going to talk about in the intro. First of all, as you can see here, some more work and changes on that west main entrance. And it's that trapezoidal shape is really being defined along with some more of the uh, footing preparation, which might be a portico or, or maybe a covered uh, awning kind of structure for that main entrance, which is pretty interesting to see. The next thing I want to show you is right behind me, a little bit farther back, as you can see by this image, this new parking lot for contractors is being used now. And they've set up a main entry checkpoint and also has a bunch of shuttle buses. So as we suspected, that's what this is being used for. And as a consequence, as you can see by this image, over on the east side in the north part of the warehouse on wheels, they are clearing out that uh, temporary parking lot because they have this one now so that they can expand back and use more of that for the warehouse on wheels. Another thing that I want to show you as you can see here, as we've been suspecting because of the uh, rebates for the electric vehicles and uh, the price cap and uh, how the Model Ys are uh, priced out, that there's going to be a lot more of the white Model Ys and as you can see both on the south side of the building here and then also over on that east transportation lot here there's still quite a bit of white model y's which is something i think we're going to see for quite some time i've also had some viewers ask if any of these cars have white interiors and the answer is yes there are some of them here at giga texas as well which is neat to see and then finally i want to show you this image here, this is over at the temporary electrical switch yard. And as you can see, the crews are installing and using these trailers and additional equipment. So I don't know if they're upgrading the temporary switch yard, if they're doing some maintenance on it, or if there's some other related activities with the new permanent switch yard not too far away from here. So it's interesting to see this activity. So otherwise, as always, thank you for your support. Thank you very much for watching. I hope you enjoy the video today, and I hope we have a really great financial results meeting coming up on Wednesday later this week. Take care and have a great week. A special thank you to all of my outstanding Patreons for your continued encouragement and support. Patreon members get access to hundreds of high-resolution photos, previews of the future material, and direct dialogue with me. If you would like to support my channel, please consider becoming a patron using this link, which is also in the video description. Please also consider hitting the like and subscribe buttons as this helps as well. Thank you. My drones are ready and raring to go. Let's go flying over Giga Texas. Start off this morning on the east side looking towards the west and seeing the main factory. It's a very cold morning today so you can see quite a bit of vapors rising all over and some ground fog as well. But this is a good view of this side of the construction site with the uh, early morning sun just coming up over the horizon right now. But let's uh, proceed over towards the battery cathode plant and take a look at some of the changes there today. Well, 
I'll use the position of the sun to give us some really good lighting here today. Now at the bottom of the screen you can see a new telephone pole has been installed and uh, that's a very interesting development. And also the way the light is hitting the building, this is a great opportunity for us to look inside a few of these sections. Uh, this is one of those large open sections from the uh, ground all the way up to the ceiling. And you can see some of the materials and some of the activity inside here and also those stainless steel pipes which are part of a ventilation system I believe. You can also see the activity here on this material storage location with quite a bit of these blue containers, some of the crates with the white tops and also some of these uh, white and red platforms that are being assembled and then they moved inside to assemble some more equipment onto these. We can also see the activity here near this temporary platform and I'm going to give you a good view into this other very tall section. Now this is the one that has the deep foundations. You can see one of them in the tallest of the two doors. You can also see quite a bit of the interior walls and that uh, ventilation ducting. And then also on the left hand side you can see another one of those deep foundations as well. And if you can see the workers, it gives you a really good idea of scale of this part of the building. So I'll pull away and turn more towards the north. We'll take a look at how this portion of the site looks today. The clearing here that has been uh, prepared with the grade raised and uh, reclaiming some of the water detention pond has got this gravel mix. So uh, they may be using this as a parking lot soon, and that'll be something we'll watch. Also notice some of the changes here is some of the temporary workshops uh, at the bottom of the screen look like they're getting a little bit of a change and a lot of the steel materials on the right hand side have been moved over and installed in that new west building and you can just see some other materials waiting here uh, for eventual installation and a good view across the battery cathode plant to the main factory in the background. So let's continue to proceed closer towards the west side of the building. As we approach, we can get a good view of this north end, the receiving doors on the ground floor, two different sizes, and then where the workers walked out is just a regular door for personnel. And we can see the temporary structure with all of the equipment still waiting for installation. Quite a bit of the concrete vaults, some of the pipes and also some of these steel components as well. Now I'll give you a good view here of the steel structure and how it continues to grow both toward the west and the south. The sun's going to be a little bit of a challenge so apologize for some of the lens flares here but I'll try to minimize that as much as we can. You can see where the crews are working in that pit where the geopiers are visible. This is getting ready for a very heavily reinforced uh, foundation and then just to the south is where those densely uh, stacked piers that have a rebar and concrete installed. So again, more heavy machinery will be installed in this portion of the building. As I continue to pull back and go around this uh, crane, I will turn the drone to minimize some of that lighting and you can see the work on the footings continues. Almost all, with the exception of about three of the largest ones have been poured. And then there's four smaller ones in the middle of the building that of uh, the forms and they're getting ready for rebar and uh, then the concrete. But this is a good view to show you the current status of all of the footings right now. Also the way the uh, steel structure looks and as you can see it continues to grow uh, both wider and longer towards the south. You can see quite a bit of the roof structure with the beams and also the decking being installed as well. As I will turn the drone back a little bit towards the main building, you can see how the pipes continue to be prepared for installation, some of them getting a white coating. And then this is a good close-in view of how this smaller steel structure with all of the pipes and manifolds looks today. You can also see some pipes entering into the building now from this installation, which is uh, really great. Now I'm going to give you a kind of a top-down view of this structure and then we'll turn back towards the west and just give you a good view of the new steel structure which is the dye shop and how it appears today. So quite a bit of changes here near the battery cathode plant. 
I'm going to continue over towards this temporary lined pond just to show you the continued progress with the trenching and uh, some of the dirt removal for, so they can install these blue water pipes. And you can see how it continues to extend further towards the west and eventually it will follow along Tesla Road until it's able to connect to the water main. But this will help provide the water service to the battery cathode complex of buildings and also will serve as part of the fire loop over there as well. I'll bring the drone down here to show you this uh, section where they're removing and relocating some of the trees. It looks like multiple of these trees are going to be relocated as you can see the one with the uh, green around it and also just uh, preparing to uh, reconfigure some of this area where the old building was. Now you can see this north parking lot is almost empty now. It's because they're using the west side new parking lot so I expect to see this warehouse on wheels expand further to the north and reclaim that area. I also wanted to give you a good view of the activity here at the new car staging and transportation lot. Not only the number of Model Ys and the activity with the trucks, but if you'll notice that about 95% of the cars are all white. And again, I think that has to do with the price structure and the e electric vehicle rebates. And we're probably going to see quite a bit of white cars uh, for the foreseeable future as uh, customers continue to take advantage of that rebate. I'm also going to uh, just give you a quick view here. If you look down, there's a few of the Model Ys, particularly one on the bottom right that has a white interior, and there's several other ones as well. So people keep asking, are they making white interiors here at Giga Texas? And the answer is yes. So let's proceed over to this smaller uh, parking lot, which is being used as sort of a new car testing and uh, checkout uh, section before they move them over for transportation. You can see just how many are located here. Quite a few of them have the covers on them. As I mentioned, an on-site source said it's because some of these vehicles are missing some parts, but some viewers didn't like that answer, so I'll let you interpret what you think is the reason for the covers. Here's a good view of these two new receiving areas. The one on the left has got all the concrete poured. It looks like they're doing some preparation work next to the doors. And the middle one looks like it's almost ready for concrete as well. This one here continues to have some of the plumbing installed, so that still needs to be completed. Then they'll finish up the grade, and then we'll see rebar and more concrete. Also note all of the castings that are stacked near this area as well. As I pull back, I'll give you a good view of the work that's going on in this reconfigured intersection. There's actual concrete being poured right now on the right side of the road and you can see how it looks on the left side. Some of the concrete's already been cross-cut as well, as you can see, and then preparation for more concrete uh, pours later on. And I will uh, move the drone up this way. You can see the blue main entrance where the workers come through here. Also how the various castings continue to multiply and be uh, stored on the outside of the uh, casting machine structure here as well. And then as I pull back around this east parking lot, I want to show you the pipe installation, or at least the work to fuse these HDPE, or also known as uh, high-density polyethylene. I've had a viewer that did not like me using the term HDPE, but both the high-density polyethylene or HDPE is appropriate use for these pipes. I believe that these will be used for treated water, and it will be... Uh, something that also helps to support the battery cathode complex of structures. As we move back towards the north, I'll give you a view of this water detention pond that is getting some reconfiguration work. Also, they've been installing some of the concrete pipe sections and doing some other work for the water management system. And this is a good view here of how this appears today and how it continues to transform and prepare for the uh, water management system that will support the electrical switch yard. As we continue to move towards the electrical switch yard, first you see there's more equipment and components that have been delivered on these trucks on the left-hand side. And on the right-hand side, you see some of these steel materials. Also, you see those uh, rounded poles. Those will be for the seventh of seven uh, A-frame structures up at the new uh, electrical switch yard. 
This is the temporary electrical switch yard, and I'm going to spend a little bit of time here just to show you where you see the crane. There's some new equipment. There's also a trailer that's used for maintenance or emergency purposes. I don't know if they're reconfiguring this as part of the work for building the new permanent electrical switch yard, as you see here, or if there's some other issue that is going on. But it is interesting to note that that is a bit of a change, and it's been uh, having some of that maintenance for the last couple of days. Here's a good close-in view of how the permanent electrical switch yard looks today. The control room at the bottom of the screen. And also you'll see there's quite a bit of these large spools with wiring. So it uh, suggests that we're going to start seeing some wiring both in the cable trays and also between the uh, new steel poles and those A-frames uh, in the near future, which is uh, another great sign that this is getting closer to the point of operation. You also see a little bit of work with materials on this north end. I did notice that there's uh, these yellow drills. I think they've just been relocated to this western side just underneath the power lines. Um, don't think that they're drilling, but it is a little bit of a change I wanted to point out. And as we go over the power lines, I'm going to bring the drone over to show you at a lower altitude how this new clearing is still triangular in shape, but it's starting to get uh, changed. Uh, it'll eventually be more rectangular. This is where the mega packs will be installed for the mega pack battery electric storage system here. You can see some of the work continuing to do excavation near this road. And at some point, I would think that uh, we're going to see this road at least temporarily removed. And here's a close up of some of the trucks uh, uh, waiting to do additional landscaping and uh, earthwork here. As we continue back towards the main building, uh, you can see on the left hand side of the screen the cyber berm. Uh, it looks like uh, in the previous video I, I thought it was uh, getting maybe some paint, but it looks like it was not getting painted at all. So it's uh, just the regular concrete color. As we approach here, there's a good view of the castings on the left hand side, which extend pretty far down the building, and then all of these castings. Uh, situated next to the northeast corner of the uh, casting machine structure. So let's uh, continue to maneuver and take a look at some of the activity on the north end of the building where you will see uh, just uh, less and less material out here as more and more is being moved inside uh, and just a small amount in this uh, green and red in those little uh, uh, fenced off sections. So let's uh, continue towards the west and we'll go around the northwest corner of the structure where the 4680s are uh, constructed and we'll take up near the midpoint of the General Assembly on this side. Here we're arriving where the concrete apron has recently been finished and some crosscut and all of these receiving doors with their various kinds of load leveler systems and also some of the uh, systems to mate up the trucks uh, has been recently installed and also we see just a lot of activity in some more of these receiving areas and then as we approach the main entrance there's a uh, Quite a bit of activity here defining this trapezoidal section. You see that all of the footings have now been completed with the mud base and also some of the mounts, which suggests that we're going to see some sort of a portico or maybe a covered uh, uh, section here. Looks like it's going to be in a trapezoidal shape, getting wider as it gets farther away from the glass doors. And also, as some people have mentioned, uh, they, this new configuration eliminates the need for the ADA ramps that the former staircase would have required. We also see here some more of the samples of these concrete sections, some of them in different colors. And I do believe that they're using this as a test to determine which color combinations that they wish to use 
in the new main entrance uh, treatment. And I'm going to pull the drone up high, look straight down to give you a bird's eye view of how this main entrance section looks, this trapezoidal section, and also with the size of the workers, gives you a good idea of scale. Now that we're back on the east side of the building, I'll take a look to the south. You can see the activity on the east side of the body in white and also the stamping machine structure. Quite a bit of these crates that are uh, being broken down and will eventually be moved off to the east side for recycling. And this is a lot of the machinery and equipment that's been delivered recently inside. So that shows that there's quite a bit of work going inside to fit out a lot of the production lines. You can also notice that this temporary staging lot and parking lot uh, on that north side has got most of the materials and equipment removed now, so that's being cleared out. And you can also see this clearing where they tend to store a lot of dirt for use on other construction sites is very active today. And uh, it's just continues to be a site that I monitor, but I'm not sure what the plans are in this particular area. So let's proceed back towards the south end of the building and we'll get a good idea of how this end uh, continues to reshape, get transformed, and prepared for the work to extend the building on this side. And this good overview gives you a really good idea of where the materials are staged, some of the work underneath the ground with some of the plumbing and the redirection uh, of the water management system around where the foundation will be, and just generally how this end of the building continues to transform. So let's get down a little bit lower and then we'll pick up the narration when we get there to take a look at uh, what is going on at a lower altitude. As you can see, most of the materials just to the south of the Syropon have now been moved away, yet more materials on the south side of that road continues to stockpile. And this is a good view from this altitude of how this end of the building now looks, and just a few areas of debris that need to be cleared out, but uh, this entire graded section is starting to look really ready for the next stage of construction to begin soon. I also wanted to give you a good view of uh, the Model Ys that are coming out of the south end of General Assembly. And this is where they prepare the cars to be moved over to the east side. And as I mentioned earlier, note that almost all of the Model Ys are white now. And uh, I have a feeling that that will be the predominant color for at least the next few months as uh, production tries to keep up with the increase in orders. As I turn the drone a little bit further to the south, you'll see this clearing area right in the middle, and it goes up towards where these uh, pipes intersect. I think this is starting to prepare for not only connecting this new uh, pipe that goes around where the foundation will be, but also to remove the last remaining section of the pipe that goes through the center of that cleared area. As I bring the drone over the cyber pond again towards the south, We'll just uh, proceed towards the south bridge. We'll turn back toward the main building and give you a good overview of how the entire south end looks today. picked up the flight on the west side of the highway to show you quite a bit of the activity that is going on here, particularly with this new parking lot. As you can see, quite a bit of contractors uh, are now using this for their car parking, and this frees up that warehouse on wheels on the east side. 
On the bottom right, you can see that new uh, controlled entry point. It's in those blue containers. And you can also see shuttle buses lined up to pick up uh, some of the employees or the contractors and move them over to the various parts of the site that they will be working on. And as we continue further to the southwest, uh, looking across the parking lot, you can see that uh, hilled and valleyed section. I would think that at some point that's going to be uh, also reconfigured for uh, more facility and uh, logistics space for Giga Texas, but I'm not really sure. I still think it would be a great place for a Cybertruck uh, testing grounds, but I'm not sure what Tesla has in mind. With this view, you can see that uh, the ponds that uh, line the sides of the parking lot and the are used to control the water runoff and make sure that the parking lot itself stays dry during heavy rains, which is something we're going to get a chance to see uh, later in February into March to see just how well that will work. But this is a good view of the number of vehicles stored here or parked here for right now. You see quite a bit of workers uh, getting ready to uh, be picked up by the shuttle buses. And as we continue closer towards this pointed section, you can see again the blue trailers. This is where the workers are checked in and uh, cleared before they enter the uh, actual construction zone. You can also see the west expansion of the warehouse on wheels continues to be used and it looks to me like there's uh, uh, more trailers than I've seen in a while. Um, but uh, we'll see if they continue to do that as they expand the north end of the east warehouse on wheels. I turned back just to give you a different perspective on this parking lot and also you can see some uh, trenching and some utility work going on near that section as well. As we turn back towards the north you can see some more of the area that has uh, had some earthwork and I would expect to see additional uh, preparation here for additional construction at some point in the near future. As we go over the concrete pile that uh, is portions of concrete removed inside of the factory as more of the production line setup continues, we get a good view of the material staging location here. That crane that you see uh, later on uh, will take that box top off and it's some electronic components and it looks like they're getting ready to move that in for installation at some point. So anyway, that's a quick view of Giga Texas here on Monday, the 23rd of January. Very busy again. And I hope that you found what you saw in the video and the narration helpful. As always, thank you very much for your support. I hope you have a great rest of the week.